So, it has been a while. A lot of things happen. We enter and are almost done with the Arexian invasion arc in the lore. And with the most recent spoilers from March of the Machines, we get a look of the new mechanics in the set. First, we have Incubate, where a spell will have its effect, then say Incubate Axe, which causes you to create a colorless incubator artifact token with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and the ability to pay 2 men of any color to transform the incubator token. That turns it into a 0-0 Pyrexian colorless artifact creature. For example, Merciless Repurposing, a card recently spoiled, is a 6 mana black spell that exiles a target creature and gives us an incubator token with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters. Not the best removal known to magic, but if you can benefit from creating a random artifact, having an instant artifact creature in case of a board wipe or just have a lot of periphery triggers, maybe you could make use of it? Next up we have Backup. This is our good guys mechanic. It's basically an ETB trigger that has us choose a creature to place a number of plus one plus one counters onto. If we choose to place the counters on a creature that is not the cause of the backup, the creature that we targeted gains the abilities from the backup source until end of turn. In this example, when Bonebringer Valkyrie enters the battlefield, if we target another creature with the backup ability, it would grant Flying, First Strike and Lifelink to that creature until end of turn, besides the plus one plus one counter. Think of it as a combat trick at sorcery speed with a creature staple to it. Flicker Dex Rejoice, maybe? But lastly, we have the mechanic that everyone was most curious about. Battles. Battles seems to be permanent with different mana costs, and from what was revealed so far, the subtype Siege. They enter the battlefield with a number of defense counters equal to the number on the bottom right of the card, and when they enter, you must choose an opponent to defend that battle. For as long as that battle remains on the field, whenever the player defending it is attacked, the attacking player may choose to attack the battle instead. Sort of like we can redirect our attacks to planeswalkers. Once the battle has run out of defense counters, being declared defeated, we exile it and we can choose to cast it for its casting cost. So far from what has been shown, that costs zero. If we do cast it, we get the backside of the battle. Yes, damage dealing spells that say any target can target battles and remove their defense counters. So for an example of it, we can see that Invasion to Ikoria is a battle for X and 2 green that has an ATB effect and comes with 6 defense counters. Once it has been dealt 6 or more damage along the game and lost its defense counters, we exile it and can cast the backside, Xylortha, the apex of Ikoria, for free. The most amusing thing from this to me is that Xylortha got a second card before getting an in-universe version of their first card back in Ikoria. Besides that, we are looking for a thick legendary creature presence in the set. So that might be another focus. Maybe. Time will tell. Anyway, glad to be back. And I hope that with this closing chapter in the MTG story, we can all get at least some new toys for our decks. From what was spoiled so far, I think the new Glissa looks really powerful for drag out games in EDH, where we are not trying to win on turn 3 with some obnoxious combo. But the new Cantorios that has been shown really resonates with me. Maybe I'll make a deck pack of them later. Maybe something else. But that is everything for this video, and I'll be seeing you guys again on the next video. Bye bye!